Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2, an explosive best of three from the Brawlers Club 2. Korean players ready to throw down in what is sure to be a dramatic series, especially when these two are involved. Let me introduce, needs no further introduction, but I need to validate my presence here. So put your likes and subscribes together. For Shopify Rebellion's iconic Terran World Champion. It's beyond. Now it's been a while since he's been able to claim that title. Still, one of the most headstrong players in the entire world. Making his style work. And forcing others to conform. Apparently that style also including making recommendations to his opponent's strategies. You should try cheesing. You think I'm a cheesy Protoss just because no one knows how to pronounce my name? No! No, I don't mean that. I mean, I'm better than you. Zown, really? Yes, really. Do I need to explain it? <laughs> Says Zown. Unsure what to make of the conversation. That's a loose translation, of course. Um, anyways, already introduced, but we'll give it another shot. You've been seeing him around town. Still making headway against the grain. Another of the very few Protoss able to compete at this level. Honestly, I'm following him very closely. He's some of the most entertaining, but also simultaneously disappointing gameplay. Some games he looks like a genius, and some games he literally doesn't isn't able to tell a pylon from a cannon. Yes, I'm still on about that GSL match. That was rough. Anyway, it's Zhao. Still asking Beyond for his strategy recommendations. Beyond says, come on, man. We're already two minutes into the match. We're over it. I didn't think you'd keep talking, but here we are. This is StarCraft, okay? Not League of Legends. You don't have someone to yell at two minutes into the match just because of what strategy they picked or you assume they picked because that's not the total meta, bro. Don't you know the meta? We're in Platinum League, but really what we should be doing is following the meta of players with twice the IQ and APM. Anyways, it's a Stargate from John. Beyond. TVP has been quite an Achilles heel for him. Honestly... Most of Beyond's series seem to boil down to whether or not he's willing to make Ghost today. When he does, he's probably the best at it. His Ghost Micro, he treats him kind of like another bio unit, which actually works out because a lot of players don't expect there to be packs of Ghosts roaming around. But uh, Beyond is very willing to put them out there on the field. But some days he decides he doesn't want them in any unit that doesn't start with M is an affront to Tyranity. So we'll see. And of course, TVP often ends abruptly. Uh, especially when things like Disruptors uh, or, or Widowmines are involved. Those explosive options, especially potent in the early and mid game. An Oracle to start things off. A Twilight is already on the way behind this, likely for Blink, as you do need some sort of follow-up. Oracle takes a look around. Sees everything, really, there is to see besides maybe the tech lab that's building a Raven. Slaps a revelation on the natural. Beyond, not happy about it. Do you like what you see? Zown, don't make it weird. Mian says, I hope you like what you see, because what you're going to see is my army coming to destroy your base. And hopefully, you as well. Conversation continues. The trash talk has been doing a relatively passive opener. He's got about as safe as you can get. A raven scattered marines to box out any oracles. Jean, uh, what he, he has in the WPM equaled by the NPM, the Nexus per minute, as he's already halfway done with his third. And charge is the choice. The star charge. A little bit of an older build, but it checks out, as phoenixes are the follow-up. This is a brute force style. 
that is supposed to match directly with the strength of the bio army. Just the sheer amount of charge knots supplemented by the phoenixes to help take out, well, really everything else. It's going to be armor first. Uh, pretty much exclusively the choice for this build, the mass charge lot, which have twice the HP as shields and that plus one armor built in as well. So very incredibly annoying for Marines to take out on their own. Here comes the gates. Besides the uh, heated commentary, only a stasis ward has been taken out thus far. This SCV picked up, knocked down for first blood. Combat shield following things up, and, and this is about as generic of a 3 racks tank push as you're gonna get. We got Stim, we got Combat Shield, we got a couple tanks, we got a Raven, and two Medivacs on the way. Beyond will be testing the waters to see if uh, Zhang's strategy is shallow enough to be broken. Both players, 100 supply. Zhang at 60 probes. So he does have some army supply to make up, but he also has time while Beyond makes his way across the map. Yeah, the Phoenixes will spot this. So none of that shenanigans early, just a straight up push. The Stasis Ward spotted and taken out the Raven, serving one of its more limited purposes as a detector, but still an important one. And a lot of energy here, potentially for anti-armor missile. Auto turrets also helpful. There's nothing to really use an interference matrix on. Auto turret. Anti-armor missile at the front. Slaps down a few auto turrets. Charge lots closing in. Beyond caught in the middle of it, but the tanks are tanking the damage as the marines and marauders grind through the rest. Battery evaporates under the withering fire of the bio army. Phoenix is still taking out what they can. The charge lots slowly but surely chipping away and without the medevacs. The rest of the bio army will be cleaned up. And we gotta ask ourselves that eternal question. At what cost? That was actually about a perfect defense from Jim. It could have been better. The charge lots were a little disjointed. But overall, Beyond lost his medevacs, his tanks, his raven, his widow mines, which I, don't, I didn't even realize he had mines, but he lost three of them. Jim lost charge lots. This is essentially the Zerg toss strategy where you build so the charge lots are just minerals he lost almost no gas he's only lost a hundred gas i'm not even sure oh the phoenix so remarkably gas efficient beyond good to see no stranger to ghost busting the counter to all this is ghosts strip away the shields of the charge lots the energy in the shields the phoenixes it's a mass of units, and each one of them vulnerable to EMP. Yes, the charge lots have that armor upgrade, but still the shields are a significant percentage of their effective HP. As well as just negating the phoenixes in general. But Zhang's made the perfect transition. Robotic bait, double colossus, blink, plus one. A fourth nexus on the low ground. Beyond, not slouching, he had his third command center. He's getting his third as well. But... It was a setback. He did enough damage that Zhang couldn't come marching across the map. He could only bring the Phoenixes. But it was a setback in terms of momentum. And now Beyond maybe only has one more fight before the tides turn. And that's because the tech tree is now being filled out by Zhang. He, he slowed it down to get the charge knots, but now he's going to have Colossi. He's going to have Templar Archives. And when all that's on the field, Beyond needs to be very careful with the fights he chooses to take. I'm surprised we haven't seen any picking up or going to the main. Beyond playing a more conventional TVZ. And I can't help but comment on how beautiful that stasis ward was. Exactly the same spot, but no Raven this time. Another thing is, honestly, I think Beyond thinks he's better than Xiao. This is why he's not doing the, the um, frantic medevac drops. Who knows? What, there's still plenty of time. But, yeah, that was an optimistic play there. But I think this is beyond saying, I will beat you directly. This is the Brawler's Club. We're not sweeping the leg, we're punching the face. And other 
Oh, <laughs> snipes and adept. Check that one off your bingo card. Another stasis. So far, Zhaun has played an immaculate game. Doing exactly what he needs to do. He gets another pickup. These are some of the most clean pickups here. Oh, and just as I said it, the Widowmine connects and knocks out a Phoenix. The rest badly bruised. Thing is, Zhaun's maxed out. He's got a, a fearsome Protoss army, especially for someone without Vikings. The first few in production now, as the Robo Bay has been, sp well, the Colossi were scanned a little earlier. And now confirmed the number is, well, four of them. With a warp prism involved and a huge charge lock counterattack ready to the northern flank. A handful of stalkers. Blank is done, but barely any stalkers. In fact, the anti-air is quite lacking here. Three phoenixes and four stalkers. 33 charge lots. EMP across the board. The shockwaves resonating throughout the army. Gonna have to rethink his options. Jean coming in though. The charge lot to stream into the natural. You can't leave your door open like that. This is in Canada. Meanwhile, charge lots in the natural and towards the main. Split Beyond's army, but very aware that Jean wants to take advantage of it. Has plenty at the front. The main base has been broken into. And overall, ground down and knocked out those charge slots. Oh. The danger balls in production. Already a couple on the field. John, I gotta say, playing a great game. He is one tech step ahead. But here comes Beyond. You see, this is what I mean. He's got, he's just got the ghost support team with each army. So many players just have their, their gang of ghosts all hanging out together. But Beyond just throws the ghosts in with the army. They're not that expensive. And this is why I think he's one of the best players with them. Once he decides to make them. He's just willing, he's, he's not treating them like they're this ridiculous pedestal of perfection that can never ever participate in a fight that isn't going to end the game. No, oh, a couple ghosts. That that makes your army so much better. Just two of them. EMP across the entire Protoss army is so much damage. And 2-2 two two is going to add to it. Plus 2, plus 2 completed for Beyond. The upgrades for Zhaun. 2-1. Two, plus 2 armor on the way. Plus 1 ship weapons for Beyond as well for those Vikings. And maybe Liberators as time goes on. And the Disruptor count grows. I'm not actually sure the Disruptors have been spotted yet. There are 5 Ruptors on the field. Most of them ensconced with the Protoss army, but... Oh, well, I take it back. Unensconced. Desconced. Which I, I wasn't even sure the first one was a word, but here we are. The Pentaballs, which is what Goku was trying to collect in his anime series, I'm sure. Will not anger people with my knowledge of that. Chown would have loved to warp in 10 charge slots. Unfortunately, he's suffering from success. He has too much supply and cannot warp in. Oh my god, look at the bank. A relatively passive early game. But it can't last. These armies at some point are going to clash. Bion has been looking for a fight. Just unable to pin down Jean. Bion's at about the best position he's going to get to besides the extreme late game. When it comes down to the... Fusion Core! What for advanced ballistics, of course. Plus two ship weapons, cloak on the way, but Jown moves into position on the high ground. Vikings flings out a couple Ruptor balls. Exploratory Novas, another shot. Beyond with a pretty beautiful split, but the second one lands home. A scan looking for, I guess, a prism there, but it's further out, John. So far, on top of everything, Beyond, though, is maxed out with plenty of army supply. 66 SCVs, which is more than enough. The income still in John's advantage, but really we're talking about the unit compositions. We've reached the maximum supply. It's what they've decided. Oh, watch out! Oh, ho, ho! A haymaker across the front line. It just obliterates a chunk of Beyond's army. He looked the wrong way. And another half just has to sit there frozen to watch. We'll see if John... Is it worth the disruptor shot? The Tempest trying to show up. Zoning Nova. Vikings having their way with whatever gets close enough. Doesn't fire the shot. 
Oh my god, the ghosts come out angrily from the stasis and launch an EMP across the board. Tectonic destabilizes. Storm, plus three, plus three for Zhao. More Tempest, blink to the left. Disruptors through the front, looking for a shot. Beyond splits back, still plenty of army. 190 to 190 supply. Blink stalkers looking for an opportunity. Vikings pull back in time. Chown, not able to lay it down. Usually at this stage, what we see is, is Dark Templar blink to take out those outlying bases. But I do want to point out that Beyond is not expanding particularly aggressively. Well, I take it back. I, I don't take it back, but I do point out there is a nuclear missile in production alongside advanced ballistics, neo-steel armor. Essentially, we are sprinting into the late game, even as the tension mounts. EMPs across everything. Disruptors, one, two, three, four, five fired. Some shots land, some disabled, some targeted down. Devastation in seconds on both sides. The disruptors are cleaned up, but Beyond's army definitely took a, a few hits itself. I think two or three disruptors landed, but most were taken out by the end of the fight. Vikings marching forward. The Blink Stalker count is not nearly high enough. Disruptors, another connection! Oh, Beyond leans into it. Charge lots looking for what they can. Both sides plummeting 50 supply in that engagement. I love to see it. Rapid reignition systems. Medivac speed and boost cooldown. Vikings on the way. Plus three ship weapons. Zhaun still willing to brawl it out with this army composition. The Blink Stalkers doing what they can. Storm of the Vikings. A great historical and practical counter. Disruptor shot, but the Venn diagram of freedom clips. A single disruptor splash damage. Vikings on deck, nothing left in the air for him. Another disruptor shot, beautiful split. Stalkers, the only thing left. Another disruptor coming through, finds nothing. Blink stalkers to body block. Not the tankiest units themselves. And Beyond is tearing through the rest of the army. Zhao just could not stand his ground and now he's going to pound town as Beyond. Says you're no longer allowed. Neo Steel Armor is done, though. The reinforcing how many gateways? 14 gateways give you a lot of supply on each warp, and the Liberators did not move to support. Zion and Beyond continue to trade shots over the fifth base of Beyond. Blinks over the top. Charge lots filling the gap. Vikings on deck. Disruptors show up to the party uninvited. Beyond must run from them, saying, I don't want to interact with you. It's a little awkward. Meanwhile, Blink Stalkers onto the base, targeting down the or or Orbital, not Oracle. 19 SCVs alongside and Beyond. Down to 107 supply. I don't think he expected the the sheer amount of gateway units that Zhao was willing to bring to the table. A lot of players will go for those high-tech units, not just Disruptors, Colossi, Templar, even DTs. Zhao just warped in a whole ton of gateway units and overwhelmed Beyond's battered army. It's not over yet. There's still orbitals, even though one zealot stoically standing guard five minutes later finally purpose is revealed the speed prism now three dt's inside and beyond expanding quite slowly his army supply is still potent but i mean it, it feels like i'm repeating myself because i am but he's one bad fight away from being knocked out he doesn't seem to break when bent all the way back to his bases, but he hasn't been able to make any headway. Zhaon once again is refilled. 185 supply, still plenty of probes, mining from a whole bunch of bases. The Liberator count is pretty getting dangerously high. We might need to see Tempest in the production tab. There's a nuclear missile still being held in the silo for now. Carriers, Raptors, DT Blank, filling in whatever really else can be gotten here. Beyond gets a little breathing room, but there's only so many minerals left to mine. There was a moment there when that last base was mining that, oh my god, that's a lot of DTs. There are 13 DTs on the field, and they're right there, looking for an opportunity. Beyond takes a step the wrong way, and they'll blink on top of them. Liberator slowly moving forward. They do have advanced ballistics, making it harder and harder for non-air units to close. Liberators goes. The beautiful circles of freedom. 
making it even more difficult for Zhao. A single ghost at the front lands the EMP. Disruptors trade it around the corner, finds a widow mine. Liberators make a no-go zone. Those blink deets looking for an opportunity. A single liberator is sieged up on the planetary. Shaun's still holding on to those DTs. He's maxed out now, Beyond making a big move forward. Liberator sieging up the front, but most of Shaun's army is coming in from the right flank. Blink DTs onto the planetary. The repair is there. Is it enough? No, they eviscerate it with only a few sweeps. But at the same time, Beyond's going to be able to annex the base of Xiao in the bottom left. Liberator's trying to cut off the reinforcements, and it looks like they'll do so successfully. Blinking over the top, Ghost distracting, Disruptors across the bow again. A full volley, doesn't find much. Beyond cuts so much of Zhaun's supply, he cleaned up many of the DTs, and he took a good fight. Zhaun with an ill-fated engagement. Going into the Liberator zones. The, the carriers don't really have the up... Well, they have plus two, but there's not enough carriers to make the difference against this many ghosts and marines on the ground. In fact, the Liberators themselves, suddenly Zhaun is out of money. Trying to defend that base and counterattack beyond the patience from the Terran player paying off, but the Disruptors also finding purchase. The DTs, you know, it's a little suspicious. Yeah... I wonder what's at that watchtower. The DT's kind of lighting up their own presence. <laughs> I don't think Sound realized exactly what a misstep that was, but the EMP lands. Oh, in the front. Still, though, Vion is struggling. Oh, that is so many liberators. Nine on the field. That nuclear missile's still in the bank here. But Vion has retaken some momentum. It's quite hard to tell. It really comes down to the positioning of the Liberators, the Disruptor hits, the sheer carrier count, and the EMPs. There's a lot that happens very quickly here. EMPs across everything. Shields stripped away. Disruptors fire back. Tempest close the distance. Disruptors zone out the Bio Army. Liberators force back again. Disruptors going to reclaim that ground. Liberators with another siege. Vikings showing up again. The Tempest slowly grinding through the Liberators. Disruptors over the front. Here comes the Bio Army, trying to take advantage of a lack of splash damage, at least reliable splash damage. Meanwhile, DT's cutting off the reinforcements, blinking away, beyond on the chase, EMP's landing. Liberator count still overwhelmingly high. Down to seven, but that ground army just cannot fight in this entire metro area. The Vikings here. Disruptor airball finds nothing. This time, also, 0 for 2. The Disruptors, predictable, dangerous, but also dodgeable. He unknows the five Ds. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge when it comes to Disruptors. And he's employing all that knowledge. Jean is trying to break through, but it feels like it's getting less and less done each time. Well, Disruptor off to the right flank. The Viking Storm show up to the party. Meanwhile, though, a single Marine dropped. Actually, the first drop from Beyond at 24 minutes in. Oh, another Disruptor slides around and finds a connection. Zhaun trying to reset the table here. Another shot targeted down. The carriers, half of them out. Well, one entirely out of interceptors. DT is closing in, trying to cut off the reinforcements. Disruptor shot doesn't target. It chases down, finds a lot of damage here. Vikings looking for more opportunity. Another disruptor shot. So much going on right now. Medivac drop came back right through the army gun now. A handful of marines are actually going to clean up the base. Both sides running out of money. It's still unclear. One disruptor hit. What an... What a tense game. Oh my... Neither side finding critical damage, but both doing a significant amount. It's still one good hit of something. Either way, 
the Blink Stalkers have to be used to zone out, but the Disruptors zone out the Bio, which helps against the Blink Stalkers, which helps against the Vikings, which deals with the Sky Toss, which deals with the Liberators, which deal with the Disruptors, and now we go again. The DTs sharking in. Find a little more. Anything to distract. But down supply is dipping beyond now, evening up the incomes. His army is more cost effective generally. The dodge is good hit from the Rupters. Looking to follow through with another. Finds only a single Marauder. The Viking count at precious low. Only one Tempest remains, though. The carriers knock down. DT's looking for more. A huge bio army. Oh, he spots him! He sees him! Oh, Archons? Really? Recall? Really? A desperate recall was never gonna happen. Zhao now scrambling. The young kept is cool. Hard won experience, I think. It has put him in this position. Zhao has not made any big mistakes. It's just he's not quite found that game-ending engagement he, he's been looking for for like 15 minutes. Beyond slowly but surely took better and better fights, but the storms with the back flank out of nowhere! The Hail Mary gets the Liberators, but is there any more splash damage? The Terran Army closes in, but will not be stopped! He's tearing through everything. There's nothing left beyond closing it out. Well, there's one more storm. Is that enough to turn the weight a second? Oh, it's like that, that. Those storms were a lot of damage. Blake Stalkers, there's like no anti-air, no EMPs. Wait, whoa, he turned it around. What a save. The Archon's coming back. No more EMPs. The only anti-air is one ghost. John's not out yet. Oh, I was so hyped for Beyond. But John turned it around. The storm's out of nowhere. That disruptor shot was optimistic at best. I think Beyond's gonna get a free pick up there, but the Archon's trying to close in. The Marines have joined the fray yet again. Not too hard to replace. Archon's targeted down. Charge Lot's doing what they can. Is there enough energy for Storm in two? One second. It's back. Is there an EMP? The EMP is required. The storms, each of these units, very stormable right now. Splash damage, they keep piling in. Everything you got, everything on the table. Whoever wins this fight, Disruptor! He plays with his life and he wins the gamble. Beyond goes in again. The storms looking for an opportunity. The ghost drop. The storms hit before the ghost can land. EMP returns fire. Archon, there's still too much bio. It just, it's over. It's just over. <sighs> oh my. It was some of the most explosive high action fights with the largest armies. And then some of the most explosive high action fights with the smallest armies. But as quickly as it started, it ends. As Jean was down to six probes. I'm sorry, I gotta go back. What happened to the probes? Down. Oh, they were dying as uh, ah, as we tapped out of the game. Oh, wow, that is a tough game to lose. And it was an incredibly tough game to win. Beyond shining through. I truly did not know which way that would go for so long. And even in the last 10 seconds, it wasn't clear. What a game. And shout out to the players for keeping it filled with action, even from the conversation in the beginning to the last, you know, 20 minutes. Oh, my God. Anyways, well, we just keep playing. They don't even remember who they are. In game number two, they've switched colors. <laughs> I, don't, I doubt the players were looking closely. Not that we can't tell the difference between Protoss and Terran, hopefully, but... Wow. I don't know. Where are you going, John? John. So, Proxy Stargate was nerfed. Void Ray's build time 
proxy shield batteries. I'm just saying. I love I love uh, Jean style. By the way, that brawler. I mean, it's the brawlers club, but that brawler Protoss. Not just gateway units, but sprinkling in the splash damage. It's a very, honestly, I said it was Zerg, but it's more like a Terran style of just constantly sending waves of, of unit. Oh my, Beyond's like, are you two gating me, bro? Down. The real meta play would be to say yes. He's faking the probe and trying to come in from the correct angle. You know what's even more suspicious? No response. <laughs> That's exactly what a two gator would say. No. <laughs> Obviously, these two friendly enough, but we'll see after this series. So, this is a wait. Okay. This is a. This is. This is like a half packs. You've seen the max packs. This is like a this is a two gate expand, except one of the gates is on the other side of the map. Unfortunately, this seems to be countered by Beyond's trademark no scout strategy, <laughs> where he just doesn't scout and therefore doesn't know he's supposed to react to this information. <laughs> he's going to have four marines by the time the stalker shows up. And no other units will be here. And so, yeah, beyond with the I'm just going to make a bunch of Marines and not scout is actually, honestly, I think he comes out ahead because of it. Like, if he had seen any, would he have seen anything suspicious? It wouldn't have changed the game. Like, he still would have seen just one gate and then it would have been revealed. I'm not sure. No, he knows. It's like, you were two gating me, bro. Korean is a very dense language. <laughs> You dick. I thought you were better than the other Protoss. And he shouldn't have been typing because then the adepts get into the base, which is not ideal. Well, actually, does Beyond just have enough Marines? Yeah, I'm not sure who was trapping who there. Uh, alright. So we're just go- we're go- we're brawling it out again. Here we go again. <laughs> oh no. I truly, because remember, Zeln expanded during all this. That's the crazy part. Like, he expanded first, and then he does this, which... Hmm? Oh, well, oh, the Marauder finishes that off. There is a Stargate now, an Oracle. It's like we're going to be slightly, well, slowly working our way into kind of where we were last game. At least when it comes down to Beyond having the bio army and and Zion relying on the Stargate. Were you gonna take a third? I think he was. I'm not exactly sure where that, that SCV was going, but here's the Twilight on the way, so... Well, the concussive shells break the knees of some of those. He's looking for it. He knows! Um, what? Okay, <laughs> that Marine almost got away with it. Oracle coming in. Beyond has the requisite five Marines. Well, six Marines, actually, for dealing with an Oracle in the main. But some of those SCVs were softened up. Not enough to make easy work for the Oracle, though. Hmm. Yeah, you can't let that- don't let them touch you! One Marauder shot essentially guarantees the death of the Stalkers. Well, this is a little awkward. Mmm. Sound might be able to fight the smaller army, but when they're both brought together... There's a turret. Was kind of looking for any, uh, Widow Mines there, it seems, but... Oh, runs out of energy. See, just like your mom told you, never turn the oracle on and off again or you'll run out of energy and we'll have to buy a new one. It's like, wow, that's quite a revelation, mom. 
Meanwhile, the Dijon, I, I, I'm not expect. his third is already done. Six minutes in, after all those shenanigans, he is opting for blank this time around. Overall, I think he's done a good job of faking an all-in. At least, even to me, and I know what he's doing. <laughs> Beyond has played quite defensive. I mean, it's going to end up still at a 3 racks medevac timing, minus the raven and the tanks this time around. But that's quite an economy. He's also hidden. Beyond has not seen any of the other side of the map. All the Oracle can do is discourage that Marine. It can't really do any. It doesn't have the energy. Remember, can't keep turning that Oracle off and on. How many times? All right. Beyond picks up. And loses his Metamax immediately! Oh my god, almost gets the second! Beyond! I think he picked up over, and then he flew over revealed buildings. I just... I apologize, I'm allergic to Beyond picking up in the Metamax. It gives me a reaction. And I mean, can you see why? He... I don't think he expected the Blink Stalkers to be directly on his front porch, was the reason why he thought he could get away with that. <clears throat> well, that is uh, quite an arrow to the knee when it comes to the medevac drops. Losing half of them, and the other one almost taken out. <clears throat> oh, that's unfortunate. thought he saw it the first time, but... Gets a revelation, will be the last one. As the Oracle caught a Widowman on the way out. Medivax, yet again exposed. The Bio Army dangerous. Is there a Colossus done? No. Just charge lots with no upgrade. To be honest, plus one. He's got Widowman. It's a very brute force army from Jump. So beyond, I think it kind of comes down to the mine hits here a bit. He's going to sacrifice a few for the greater good, but beyond just unburrows. I lost a couple throughout this. Little mines connect. Down on precious little supply, but the charge lots, you see, I'm not entirely convinced just building your third on the low ground is a safe choice most of the time. Like, can't we just build it in the main and float it down? How much time do you lose? If even one zealot gets by, I'm just saying, Beyond. Just saying, just just asking questions. <clears throat> well, Blink Stalkers go forward. Don't target the medevac to start. Colossus comes up. Going to force the army back. Widow Mines. Oh, there's still a lot of Marauders in the mix here. Blink Stalkers kind of blunk into the side. Colossus looking for what damage it can add. There aren't that many Marines left. The Marauders understanding the situation, but a beautiful Blink. Well, not for the Stalkers. Xiao loses a lot, but he keeps the Colossus. He lost the sentries, though. And Guardian Shield going to be a big thing to miss. Guardian Shield reducing all the damage from the Terran army. Definitely something you wouldn't choose to do without. Plus two, plus two for Beyond. I'm going to try to press the issue with extended thermal lands coming up, as well as three colossi tiptoeing their way across the map. Hmm. A single ch- Oh my god, running around the corner there. John. Extended Thermal Land still isn't done, so doesn't get the benefit of that range quite yet. But does want to get as much done before the Vikings. It's a, it's a tough line to walk. There was a Prism now headed across the map. Immortals as well. The unrepositioning his army. The spread is very nice here. Thermal Lance is done, but that's a whole lot of Terran. Down goes one Colossus. Going to need reinforcements or to evacuate. Charged lots, warped in. Plus one, plus one against just the plus one attack. But that army is bruised. The medevacs are nearly out of energy. Beyond is still vulnerable. The Colossi, very interested in killing that refinery. 
Just a couple Vikings for now. Ghost Academy already on the way. <clears throat> Beyond understanding where success lies. We got double Rupters in production. For Jean. Leaning on him. Beyond, he had some solid dodges in the last game, but the Disruptors ultimately did pay off, I think. It's a delicate balance. You can't rely on them to get all the damage done, but it's the moment you have enough to do damage with other units that the Disruptors become so dangerous because one misstep and you lose that critical mass of Terran. What do we have up here? <clears throat> zealot meets Marine. Marine meets Zealot. Zealot kills Marine. What did you think was going to happen? Vengeance is attained in the center of the map as a 100 supply bio army. Beyond picks up. And he goes to the main. Redirects at the last second, realizes the main base is entirely vulnerable. There's not enough energy for a recall on this Nexus or the natural. The army is entirely out of position. Beyond has held on to the Metavex besides the false start earlier this game. Zhaun has to walk back. Oh no. This was about as perfect of a timing as you could ever ask for. <clears throat> Zhaun was forming up to have a strong army. But instead, he has to drag it entirely out of position, doesn't even get a medevac on the way out. The bio army leads into a raptor hit though. Zhaun realized his vulnerabilities, kept the disruptors, but you gotta be careful. The disruptors left directly on their own. Charge lots into the third. Zhaun's not out of this one yet. Still doing his best here. <clears throat> Looking to fight on the left flank. 3-3 on the way. Zhaun, he had his plus two shut down. And that means it's a three upgrade be advantage for Beyond. Without splash damage, almost impossible to kill these bio units. In the natural, a handful of charge lots. Meanwhile, a drop back into the main. No Nexus back online. Colossi stepping over the Reaper Cliff. A pickup again. John is buying time. He has the economy for the most part, even though Beyond is now taking his. Ah! Not today. Well, maybe today, but later today, says the Zealot. Gun down. One ghost ambitiously leading the charge. Disruptors, disruptors! One targeted, two more follow suit. Miss their mark. There's still one more in the chamber. Fires the shot. Doesn't quite find it. Meanwhile, the drops at the back. Keeping Shaun busy. The Vikings chasing a couple force fields, but the Vikings actually get the Colossus. A bunch of charge lots in the third. A hectic situation yet again. Bion is slightly up on supply. He's got a lot of money in the bank, actually. Slipping on the macro. <clears throat> As all this is going on. The charge lots look for another target. This one even more dangerous than the last. Jean gets out with two zealots. The medevax, a couple, not full, but still nice to get. Only one medevac remains, headed towards the main. Jean moving out of position, assuming that was all of them. Classic mistake. Still very much in it. The upgrades are the big issue here. Plus three, plus three, plus one against just plus one attack. Splash damage is 100% required now. Even Zealots are going to struggle against a single Marine. This is, it can't be overstated how hard it's going to be for Gateway units to deal with this. Beyond not taking his chances. This is probably Jean's best opportunity. Is a direct strike. The army coming in from the right flank. The disruptors fire their shot. One targeted, second targeted, third kills its own zealots. 
Colossus down as well. Plus two finishing up the town. Can only get closer to even during this. Bion has built a fearsome army. No Templar this game. Any flavor. Disruptor shot finds a connection. Another disruptor has to retreat. Widow Mines targeted down. Another Ruptor zones out. How many shots does he have left? Of course, they're cooling down. Fires one to deal with the back flank. An incredibly smart move here. Where are the EMPs? Vikings on deck. Disruptors recharging. Another shot. Zoning out. Beautiful hit. Takes the brunt of it. But the Vikings are doing us so much damage on the ground here. Liberators trying to siege. The Vikings do the damage and they dodge the Ruptor. The Vikings win the day. The Disruptor's still looking, but not. It's not enough. The Vikings with plus one attack, there's just not enough damage from sheer gateway units without the Ruptor support. And these charge lots are not long. Oh! The Young keeps attacking with just barely not enough army. I take it back. Charge lots. Well, I, I take it forth. Another Disruptor. Clips a Marine, and now we'll be chased down. He just keeps pumping these out. Somehow, Jaun is still in it. He was doing a great job with that fight. I think almost everyone underestimated. Both Jaun, myself, and probably Bion, I'll be honest. Uh, those Vikings did a lot better on the ground than I, I think you could expect. They cleaned up the army after eliminating all the air targets. The, the Vikings, always that unit that people underestimate until they... Un the lower your MMR, the greater you respect them. So here we are. In the campaign, they're even better. Another shot. Oh, the Disruptors are on their own. The Terran surround looking for more. Staggering the shot still. Very well done by him. But this is just a gateway army otherwise. And he taps it out. What a crazy match. Yet again, from both these players. <sighs> Exhausting. That game won, followed up by another hectic game. I... Well, Beyond takes this one. Zown had his moments. About every 20 seconds when the Disruptors cooled down. I gotta say, I think either of these games could have gone either way. But, at the end of the day, it is, it is, uh, Beyond who comes out on top with some confident Terran versus Protoss. Getting those ghosts so quickly, using the Vikings and all their dimensionality. I enjoyed, and hopefully you enjoyed, the Brawlers Club this time around. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, check out these videos, those, those videos, and so many more. What did you think? What? What is a group of disruptors called? What would you call it? This is important, especially if we're going to be casting more John. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.